So like many of you, I'm obsessed with the TV show Severance. And also like many of you, I love the haunting and deeply unsettling music for the series. However, I suspect unlike many of you, I decided to pay tribute to the show by rendering that music in the online graphing calculator Desmos. Now this is a little bit insane, because from a sound synthesis perspective, Desmos is somewhat more limited than, say, Ableton or Pro Tools. In fact, all it has is a single function, tone, which takes a frequency in hertz and an amplitude. But when you combine this with its ability to animate parameters and to create and manipulate lists, you can make some pretty wild stuff. Actually, this crazy nonsense right here is probably a good starting place on our journey to create the Severance theme in Desmos. So if you've used Desmos before, it was probably as a graphing calculator, like this. But did you know that you can add extra parameters and give them sliders, like this? You can even use this to create animations, like this one, where the coefficient of x squared varies with a sine wave. But why stop there? Let's add an x coordinate, which varies with another parameter, and use that to create a point, which oscillates up and down the curve. Now to create some sound from this, it's helpful to define a couple helper functions. The first is a frequency function that takes a y coordinate and gives us a frequency. You might notice that it's an exponential function, but that's actually gonna make the pitch sound linear because we hear frequencies logarithmically. Next, let's define a volume function as a function of x, which makes the point silent at x equals zero, approaching full volume around x equals two or three. Finally, we'll use the Desmos tone function with a frequency that depends on the y coordinate or f of x and a volume that depends on the x coordinate. Let's turn on the sound and start the animation. Of course, this effect is a lot more interesting if you do a whole bunch of these at the same time. At least interesting is one word for it. Okay, enough messing around. Let's start laying down the Severance theme music, starting with the harmony. Now the Severance theme music is based on a four chord loop of C minor, G flat major, F major, and A flat minor all over a pedal tone of a low C, which means that no matter what chords are happening above, there's always a C in the bass, even when it creates a dissonance with the chords above. That's part of what makes the music sound the way it does. And to model this in Desmos, what I'm gonna start with is just this single line, C, D flat, C, C flat, then build up the chord above it, and then add the low pedal Cs. Now back over in Desmos, we're gonna start as before with a function that converts graphical units to frequencies. The idea is that when you plug in zero to that function, you get a frequency of 261.63, which is middle C. Then for every 0.1 that you change the input, it goes up by a half step. So 0.1 is C sharp, 0.2 is D, D sharp, E, F, and so on up until the next C. These units were helpful for me as a composer because they're not that different from MIDI pitch values. And in case you're trying to follow along with the function up here, 12 half steps or 1.2 is the same as six over five, which cancels with the five sixths in the numerator, doubling the frequency and thereby going up an octave. Okay, so with that pesky detail out of the way, melody is basically just a piecewise constant function like this. Here I've represented the C, D flat, C, B natural line from the bottom layer of the harmony. I've used Desmos's syntax for a piecewise function, which involves a bunch of pairs of the domain and the value for that domain. To hear this melody, we can introduce a new parameter T, which goes from zero to four, show where we are in the melody with a point at T melody of T. And then to hear it again, we need the Desmos tone function with the current melody value being fed into the pitch function to give the frequency of the tone. Now the beauty of this is that we're actually already 90% of the way to making harmony because Desmos lets you use lists to represent multiple values. So instead of just 1.2, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, .1, we can use these lists to represent the chords. Let's take a listen now. Now, because this whole thing is a harmonic loop, it felt a little bit more reasonable to represent it as a circle. Basically, this involved converting to polar coordinates. So I defined the regions of the harmony domain in terms of pi, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And then by writing r of theta equals harmony of theta, does most graphs that in polar form. For the locations of the points, I had to do that conversion a little bit more manually, but it still wasn't too big a deal. One last thing you might've heard in the performance is that the volume isn't constant. I shaped it with a scaled cosine curve, which looks like this if we were to graph it. 
Anyway, that's how I did the upper chords, but what about the repeated Cs in the bass? Well, since the pitch of those notes is constant, basically all I needed was a volume function. This looks more complicated than it really is because of the scaling factors of pi. Essentially, it's just a linear downward ramp fed through a modulo function, which means that it repeats every pi over two, which is a quarter of the cycle. This phase shift of pi over four is responsible for the bass playing on beats two and four instead of one and three. And then all I had to do was plug that into the tone function with a pitch of zero, which is middle C. In terms of visualization, I thought it would be nice to represent this as a shrinking circle, which in polar form is dead easy. R is less than bass volume times 0.3 to scale it down. And so when you combine that with the harmony, you get the opening to the severance theme. So you know what time it is. It's time to add the melody. Now it's kind of a funny melody, right? Because it wiggles back and forth between the major seventh, B natural, and the minor seventh, B flat. That gives it a kind of dual personality, like it's stuck halfway between melodic minor and natural minor. Wait a minute, dual personality? Has the melody been severed? Well, regardless, it's pretty easy to put it in Desmos at this point, because it's basically the same procedure we already did. First, we define the melody as a piecewise function of theta. It's a little bit harder to define the segments of the domain, but it's not too bad. And if you graph it, it looks like this. Next, we can graph it in polar form, like we did with the harmony. And just like before, we can see and hear the melody play by adding a point and a call to the tone function. Again, I shape the volume of the melody with a scaled cosine wave, this time one that reaches zero right at theta equals pi. Adding back in the harmony parts, we get this. So that was easy. And the truth is we could do the same thing with the second half of the melody too. But at this point, I was getting kind of tired of entering in individual angular domains and figured there must be a better way. And it turns out that there is. For the second half of the melody, instead of entering each note of the melody individually, I created a list of pitches and attack points where notes start, which are measured in 16th notes from the start of the first bar. It turns out that this is a way better way of making a piecewise constant function because I can define all the domains and values simultaneously. And when you graph the function, you get this. And you can use the same list syntax to create a piecewise function for the volume, which looks like this. Admittedly, the volume function is a little bit gnarly looking, but all it's really doing is seeing how far you are from the end of the segment and taking the square root of that. That makes the notes kind of taper in volume like this. Then all that's left is to draw it in polar form, add a playback dot and play the tone. So there you have it. I mean, at this point, all there is to do is add the drums. Wait, how do we do that exactly when all we can play is a sine wave? While you're thinking about that, I just want to say that, of course, trying to orchestrate music in Desmos is insane, but it's also a great way to learn because it's so hands-on. You're actively shaping and visualizing and hearing the functions in real time. For the same reason, if you want to deepen your knowledge of math, science, or programming, I really urge you to check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Now, maybe you've already seen clips of their awesome interactive diagrams, but the key is that these diagrams are part of a well-supported approach to learning that steers your brain towards active curiosity and problem solving rather than passive memorization. The lessons were created by an award-winning team from places like MIT and Google. And I think they're so good at asking the right questions at the right time in a way that really draws you into the subject matter. They've also managed to break up complex topics like calculus into short, manageable lessons to help you make learning new things a part of your daily routine. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Mark Evanstein, either by clicking the link in the description or just by scanning this QR code right here. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much to Brilliant for supporting this channel. Okay, so what about the drums? Well, the basic problem is that all Desmos has is a function to create a single sine wave at a single frequency. If we were to represent that on a frequency amplitude graph, it would look like this a single thin vertical line. But percussion instruments like kick drums and hi-hats are more like this. We call them noise bands, whole ranges of frequencies. So how can we make that out of these tiny vertical lines? But, well, the best I could come up with was to make a bunch of those vertical lines and to use randomness. So luckily Desmos has a function random, which lets you generate a list of random numbers. In this case, a list of 100 numbers between zero and one. To make these useful frequency values, we could do something similar to our pitch mapping function, like this. Notice that all of these numbers are gonna be between 500 times two to the zero, which is 500, and 500 times two to the one, which is a thousand. 
We can also depict them graphically, like this. So returning to our severance theme, I created two lists, a hi-hat chord and a kick chord. They're basically the exact same thing, except that one goes from 3000 to 6000 hertz, and the other goes from 40 to 80 hertz. Want to hear it? Let's take a listen. Okay, that kind of sounds more like a cicada than a hi-hat, and that's because I left off one important detail. Percussion sounds like drums and hi-hat decay, and the exact shape of that decay is part of their personality. So to incorporate that decay, first I defined a list of attack points, like we did with the second part of the melody. And then I defined a volume function based on those attack points with a pretty steeply decaying exponential. I did the same thing with the kick drum, except that it's a less steeply decaying exponential. So then all I had to do was call the tone function with a block chord of those random sine waves and that volume function. And that sounds like this. The visualization, by the way, is just a graph of an inequality, filling in the area between the square root of hi-hat volume and negative the square root of hi-hat volume. So there you have it. That's how we make the severance theme in Desmos. Oh, and maybe you noticed this triplet snare button here? It was kind of an experiment. It's made the same way as the drums, but it's a little bit glitchy, so I don't want to talk about it too much. It's almost like Desmos wasn't intended as an audio engine or something. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this insane deep dive into recreating the severance theme in Desmos. And hey, if you liked it, maybe check out some of the other videos on my channel. But if you do, remember to enjoy each one of my videos equally. Oh, and by the way, one of the ways I support the work that I do on the channel is just through private teaching. So if you want a music or a calculus teacher who goes on a bunch of unnecessary but interesting digressions, hit me up. Oh hey, you're still here. Well, I guess there's one more thing. I started an extra channel to post extra nonsense of questionable quality. In this case, I posted a video of myself messing around with the Desmos severance music, creating some fascinating and truly horrifying results. And as an extra incentive for you to check it out, I've posted a link to the Desmos graph in the description of that video.